Hey, honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of The Rod Peterson Show. Hey, welcome back to the Rod Peterson Show on the air. Thanks to James Sabolsky from Sportsnet Radio in Vancouver joining us. Clark, we got one more break, don't we? I thought we had one more break. Yeah, we do. All right, so this is not the overtime segment. We got that coming up in just a second. Our show uh, uh, powered by Caliber Coffee here with the, uh, with the coffee this morning. Um, a great blend. Uh, I think it's the Sumatra this morning that we're having from Caliber. Uh, lots to get to this morning. The Prairie Mobile text line is open. We've got some thoughts and comments there. Um, we've got, uh, let's pull up the Prairie Mobile text line. 306-840-8777. Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer. Janice in the text line says, Edmonton clearly won the trade deadline. I would agree with that, uh, Janice, that Edmonton won the trade deadline day for sure. I mean, uh, what they did to increase their group with Andreas Athanasiu coming in, the, the 25-year-old speedster who many are saying can play along Connor Mc, alongside Connor McDavid and keep up with him. That's going to be interesting to watch. Now, can he get back to his 30-goal pace he was on last year? I'm not sure. We often get way too romantic about players' pasts, and we expect that to continue and be the expectation for the future, and that's not always the case. He's had one 30-goal year. Now, he's only 25, but he's had one 30-goal year. It's unrealistic to expect this guy to come into Edmonton and be a 30-goal scorer. It's unrealistic. Now, can he get there with Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Kaylor Yamamoto? Yeah, possibly. Got good players playing around you. He doesn't have that where he was earlier in the season, but it shouldn't be the expectation. It is an upgrade. It is some depth scoring. It is some speed. You really like that. Tyler Ennis comes in from Ottawa in exchange for a fifth-round pick. He's a three-time 20-goal scorer, but that's a long time ago. He's 30 years old now. It's unrealistic to expect him to be a consistent 20-goal scorer. But here's a guy who adds some offensive touch, can add some scoring to your bottom six forwards, and potentially playing with a, you know, in a different situation in a team that's contending could re-energize you, and you might come out and see Tyler Ennis play well. And Mike Green, 34-year-old defenseman coming in from Detroit in exchange for Kyle Brodziak and a conditional fourth-round draft pick. I like that move again. But again, don't expect Mike Green to come in and be your power play quarterback the way he was in Washington or the way he was early in Detroit. This is not going to happen. But here's a veteran presence in the locker room, somebody who can add some, you, some experience to that back end and potentially a little offensive up to upside, maybe help out on the power play. But that Edmonton power play is very good already. So I like what Ken Holland did at Edmonton. But it's not planned the parade time yet. As Dustin Nielsen said, it's a win for Edmonton to get into the playoffs. That's a success to get in and compete. Now, a first-round exit to the hands of the Calgary Flames, that would be considered a failure. But by no means is the expectation now in Edmonton, you've got to get to a conference final or you have to get to a Stanley Cup final because that's just unrealistic. The West is so tight. The Pacific Division itself is so tight. You look at the teams in the Pacific Division right now. Vegas has 76 points. Now, Edmonton's got two games in hand and they're three points back at 73 points. Vegas has won six in a row. That's the RP bump. Remember, Vegas had lost back-to-back games before Rod went down and was invited by the Golden Knights. I'm starting to wonder if if Gary Lawless and and Kelly McCrimmon invited Rod down to get the bump. They might have needed the RP bump. They had lost two in a row. We're sitting, I believe, outside the playoffs at the time, just on the outside. But here comes Rod. And they beat St. Louis, and they beat New York, the Islanders, and they continue to win. They've rattled off six straight victories, and now all of a sudden are sitting in top place in the Pacific Division. So Vegas and the RP bump have uh, moved up into first place. There's Edmonton. And then Vancouver is one point back of the Oilers with the game in hand. Edmonton is, uh, I believe, in Anaheim tonight. Vancouver is in Montreal. So two very winnable games for the Oilers and the Canucks. Uh, Let me take a peek. Find out where Vegas is tonight. They are playing i believe they're on the ice tonight um or are they on the ice tomorrow 
Um, checking the schedule right now, Vegas is on the ice tomorrow um, when they welcome in Edmonton. That's a big game. So looking forward to that one tomorrow uh, when Edmonton will play uh, Vegas. But then you look beyond that into the wild card, and that's where the Flames sit. Flames are in that first wild card spot um, right now with 70 points, tied with Arizona. But the Flames have two games in hand, two games in hand on Arizona, and one game in hand on Vegas at 70 points. And then Winnipeg coming in, having lost back to back games coming in at uh, 69 points, one point out of a playoff spot. Nashville at 68, two points out of the playoffs, and then Minnesota way back at 65, five points out. Those are the only teams that, in my mind, have a sniff of the playoffs right now in the West. So uh, that's interesting, but Edmonton did a great job. You look at winners and losers when it comes to trade deadline day. Winners for me, the Oilers. Vegas, a big winner. Alec Martinez, a big piece in the back end. They get Robin Lehner, uh, the goaltender. And for Lehner, I mean, he was a Vesna finalist last year, which to me brings up why I feel that Chicago is one of the losers of the trade deadline. They didn't get much, you know, in return for Gustafson and their goaltender. Um, let me pull it up right now because I've got it uh, on my phone right now. You look at what uh, what they did. Uh, they came into the, uh, into the deadline trying to make a move and... Vegas, I mean, they also upgraded their bottom six, adding Nick Cousins to the deal. They, all, I mean, they acquired Chandler Stevenson earlier on in the year. But when it comes to the losers of the trade deadline day, um, Chicago is definitely one of those teams. Um, they traded off Eric Gustafson and Robin Lehner. The returns were pretty u- underwhelming. Uh, again, we mentioned Lehner, a Vesna Trophy finalist last year. Um, they only got a second-round pick, Malcolm Subban, and a prospect for him. Um, thought maybe could have gotten a better deal for him. And again, now they got to go with Corey Crawford into the season, who's uh, a little bit older than Robin Lehner, and he's got uh, some worse numbers this season. So that's a tough one. And Toronto might be considered losers as well in the deal. Um, trying to move Tyson Berry. I don't know if I've given up on Tyson Berry yet in terms of the Leafs back end, but he's set to, I believe, be an unrestricted free agent this year. And with Jake Muzzin re-signing for decent numbers, it's thought that Tyson Berry might not be back next year. Uh, so you might lose him for nothing. If you remember, he was part of that deal that sent Nazem Kadri to the Colorado Avalanche. So, um, our Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision poll, uh, uh, poll question for the day is, uh, who is the big winner of free agency, or, or of free agency, I've said that a few times, trade deadline in the NHL uh, yesterday, the Edmonton Oilers running away with it, 42.6% of the, bulk, of the vote, the Edmonton Oilers, followed by Carolina at 27.9%. Uh, the Golden Knights were third, but now they're falling out to fourth, and other at 16.4%, so other. Um, that might include some of the teams who got some prospects and some draft picks. That includes Ottawa and San Jose, who did very, very well. If you ask Kelly Rumpel back in hour one, he really liked the job that the Ottawa Senators did um, on the trade deadline yesterday. Calgary, one of my losers in this whole deal. Eric Gustafson, Derek Forbert, uh, a depth defenseman. Gustafson did have 60 points last year in the back end with Calgary. I do like him. But that's a one-off. He was falling out of favor with the fan base in Chicago, so I don't know that I like that deal uh, that much for Calgary. They needed a little bit more help uh, than they got. But for me, the big winner was Patrick Marlowe. Uh, Patrick Marlowe off to Pittsburgh. He's got another chance to win a Stanley Cup, and for that reason, I will be partially on the Pittsburgh Penguins bandwagon um, this spring. Wayne on the Facebook feed says, I would love to see two Canadian teams in the Stanley Cup Finals. It's probably just a dream, but got my fingers crossed My question is, Wayne, who would those two teams be? It's got to be Toronto and if it's up to me right now, I'd say Vancouver. But Edmonton, Calgary, Winnipeg, they've all got something to say about it. Um, so there you go. All right, we got to take a break. We're over to over here. I've got some comments to get to on the prompter. I want a quick comment on football. I want to get some XFL thoughts, um, some uh, CFL thoughts, a small NFL thought. And I got an NHL story. I want to tell you the story about my first NHL game. It pertains to the Canucks so uh, and why I think the Canucks are going to be in the Stanley Cup Finals. We'll do that in overtime for Emerald Water on the other side. It's the Rod Peterson Show here on Facebook Live. And listen live at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 